Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to South Indian Bank Limited Q4 FI24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by ICICI Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Chintan Shah from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Nirav. Uh, good evening, everyone. And welcome to the Q4 FY24 results conference call for South Indian Bank. Uh, we have with us from the management, Mr. Priya Keshadri, Managing Director and CEO, along with the senior management team. Uh, so yeah, without further delay, I would now like to hand over the floor to the management. Uh, thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Chintan. Uh, thank you, Neera. Uh, good evening to all of you and thank you for joining us uh, for the South Indian Bank Limited Q4 FY24 earnings conference call. I'm joined uh, by my colleagues, Mr. Thomas Joseph A, EVP and Chief Business Officer, Mr. Andrew George T, CGM and HR, uh, CGM, HR and Operations, Mr. Sanchez Sina, Chief General Manager and Head Distribution and Branch Banking, and Vinod Francis, our GM and CFO, along with other senior colleagues of mine. Let me start with the key highlights of financial performance for the financial year 2024. The bank declared its highest ever net profits for the year uh, at 1,070 crores, uh, which is a growth of 38% compared to the 775 crores in the previous uh, year. Uh, this represents the highest net profit that we've ever registered, uh, which is uh, uh, a matter of some pride for us. Net interest margin for the quarter came in at 3.38%. Uh, uh, in Q4 2024, and for the full year, stood at 3.31. It's the highest uh, such number in uh, 18 years. So we have we have to go back 18 years to hit 3.31 again. The bank was able to show healthy growth in the average assets during the quarter. Average assets for the quarter grew 5%, which is again a sign of uh, reasonable robustness on the business side. The bank declared its highest return on assets at uh, 91 basis points and uh, uh, the highest return on equity in the last 10 years at 12.13%. Net interest income for the quarter was 875 crores as against 819 crores during Q3 FY24. Majority of this growth in net interest income came on our banking assets side. A small proportion, a small fraction, approximately 10 crores or so, incremental revenue came via increased interest income on our treasury book. So therefore, a large proportion of the growth in uh, net interest income is coming through the uh, sustained growth in assets. The bank uh, successfully completed its rights issue during Q4 FY24, taking the capital adequacy ratio uh, of the bank to 19.91% and tier one capital to 17.65%. Total business of the bank grew by 11% to 182,346 crores. Total deposits also grew by 11% to cross the one lakh crore mark. CASA uh, balances increased 8% year on year to 32,693 crores. Provision coverage ratio, excluding write-off, improved by 354 basis points year-on-year -year to reach 68.66%, almost 69%. And PCR, including write-off, the way RBI measures it, improved to 79.10%. Overall, gross NPA reduced by 64 basis points uh, to 4.50%. Net NPA reduced by 40 basis points to 1.46%. basis percent. Recovery and upgradation in NPA accounts for the quarter stood at 424 crores against a slippage of 284 crores for the quarter. We continue to grow our gold loan business, which now stands at 15,513 crores, with an average LTV of 74.92%, uh, 
including loans that have been bought out. And an average ticket size is approximately 1.56 lakhs. Gold loans grew at 12% year on year. Personal loan is another segment where we see good traction. Since the launch of uh, pre-approved personal loans in 2021, uh, as on March 2024, our personal book was approximately uh, 2,282 crores. Our corporate uh, business uh, continued to grow robustly, coming in at about 32,000 crores at the end of this quarter. Uh, the total growth on the corporate side is approximately, on a year-on-year on a -year basis, is approximately 8,000 crores, which uh, accounts for a substantial portion of our total growth as well. Credit card is another area where there was significant growth during the year. Uh, we closed uh, the total book as at uh, March 24 was approximately 1,620 crores. Home loan and auto loans, areas where we are trying to increase our focus, uh, was able to grow 26% quarter on quarter for HL and 23% quarter on quarter for auto loans. Uh, the home loan book as of the end of March 2024 was approximately 5,083 crores, which is 29% of our retail segment. And the auto loan book was a 1,599 crores, which is 9% of our retail segment. We launched a bunch of new products, uh, which will hopefully enable us to increase our NIMS. Uh, these include affordable housing, commercial vehicle and equipment. And we relaunched the lap product. For those of you on the call, uh, loan against property is a, is a product that uh, uh, is underrepresented in our balance sheet. Approximately 1,800 crores of that uh, asset category only exists on our balance sheet, and we think that that is an area where we can get some growth with reasonable characteristics at higher spreads, uh, which will you know, contribute to the overall NIM of the organization going up. We will continue to maintain the momentum and disbursements and collections in the coming quarter so that we achieve our desired targets. Uh, with this, uh, I'd like to open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Jay Mundra from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, congratulations uh, on a good quarter. Um, so I wanted to check first if you can elaborate. You have provided some uh, details on the strategy, uh, but if you can also highlight uh, two key things. Uh, one is that you are saying that you are improving branch productivity and you have launched sales value addition as a metric to you know, sort of attract um, the branch productivity. Uh, if you can elaborate a little bit more on that, um, how do you intend to do that? Um, does this changes uh, a lot of things or this is going to be a gradual incremental thing? Um, and um, how would it uh, uh, impact, uh, let's say, the overall financials? That is uh, question number one. Uh, and secondly, on the if you can throw some light on the loan mix, because even in this quarter, uh, it looks like that corporate, uh, the growth has come from mainly from corporate versus uh, what we are trying to do is to grow more on you know, MSME side. So uh, these two questions, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jay. Both are very good questions. Uh, let me answer the second portion of the question first. It is right that, uh, you know, even in this quarter, we were uh, dependent on corporate uh, to give us uh, a reasonable chunk of our growth. Uh, I think the transformation of our organization wherein uh, retail uh, starts firing again is, uh, will take a little bit of time. And I think there needs to be a reasonable amount of patience because we need to get uh, 
A, the structures put in place that can originate these loans, and B, we need to, uh, you know, build uh, salience with respect to these products with the customers as well. So both of these processes have started. We are seeing uh, growth, as I said, home loans on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, there was a 26% growth. But having said that, it is on a low base. So, so as long as you know, we now need to repeat it quarter on quarter, and we need to keep getting significant growth for it to start materially impacting our balance sheet. So that is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, on the MSME side, again, uh, we made a bunch of changes to our organization. Um, we used to have um, earlier. We used to have a sales force that uh, was responsible for onboarding these customers, but not for managing them. And there was this, uh, uh, you know, for these larger ticket MSMEs, um, there was a confusion as to whether the branch was managing it or this uh, relationship managers were managing them. So now we're moving to a structure where very clearly relationship managers will manage them and branch will only provide uh, service at the branch level. Uh, and uh, origination of these assets can happen either at the branch end or through these relationship managers. And uh, from a, a tracking and reward point of view, we will reward both ends, in the RMs as well as the branches. So these kind of transitions are taking place. And for all of this to settle down and uh, start resulting in very significant increases uh, in balance sheet is going to take a little bit of time. So it would be um, uh, hard for us to display growth immediately. But having said that, we can see uh, trend lines which are encouraging, and we think that as we go forward, it will start playing out the way we want it to play out. With respect to sales value addition, it's very simple. What we try to do is, for every branch, the branch, every product the branch sells, we have tried to use our historical data to see what is the value uh, that accrues to the bank as a consequence of that sale. So this is uh, based on prior uh, history. So if you open a particular type of account, what balances historically on average have you had? For how long have you had it? And what is the expected PNL uh, that drops uh, into the bank? It's something that we've computed. Using this, we have uh, created goals for the branches in such a fashion that the expectation is the branch produces sales value addition, which is equivalent to 50% of its cost. Uh, the other 50% being actually met by servicing uh, existing clients. Our hope is that uh, if every branch of ours adds 50% by, by, by way of sales value addition, then our top line will start growing quite rapidly uh, because right now we are not doing it. So even today, only approximately a third of our branch cost uh, was recovered uh, during the quarter, uh, which means that our existing uh, portfolio uh, had to uh, support uh, the other two thirds. So as that increases, and you know, remember that all of this will drip through into our PNL. So. Uh, the, the, the sales value addition that we compute is the net present value uh, of the expected uh, revenue streams that we, uh, that we see in the future. And uh, so as sales value addition increases, automatically the revenue streams will start building. And uh, I think that will start play, playing through into our p &L. I mean, at least that's the hope. Right. No, so if I get it correct, what you're saying is that the, the sales and the, the branch would endeavor to recover 50% uh, of the branch cost through sales value addition, which is, you know, a normal uh, sales uh, value addition to the, to the branch. And the rest will be uh, covered by existing set of clients. Is that what you're saying? Because Yes, yes. So what we are saying is, out of 100 rupees, if there's a 100 rupee branch cost, 50 rupees we want to cover by way of sales of new products. So the discounted value of future uh, 
value that we see from these products sold is 50 rupees and the other 50 is the cost of maintaining a portfolio so you know we have to do we have a relationship with millions of customers managing those relationships is also expensive 50% of the cost is uh, towards that and the other 50% is is being paid for by new customers so if we can get to that level we believe that we will be in a position to start growing revenue quite healthily because last quarter we think was a better quarter than most when we built this uh, metric uh, our expectation was roughly about 100 branches will meet it because that was the historical trend line but last quarter approximately 202 did meet it so we we have seen a significant uptick uh, one of the things that was very satisfying is that current account origination for the quarter uh, increased fourfold for us in the last quarter. Uh, and the average balances, average quarterly balances, uh, increased by almost 70%. So of accounts that were originated in one particular uh, quarter, how did the average balances for those accounts you know, track over multiple quarters. We, we looked at it and we found that the average quarterly balances went up quite nicely. So some of this is uh, on account of this measurement standard that we put in place. Some of it is extraneous factors, but we are reasonably, you know, we are we are we are uh, enthused by the end results. Actually, we are quite happy with what has happened. And would this involve a lot of? change in the branch PRA or the incentive structure uh, to the field and the branch or this is that that module has also been done. Yes, sorry, so the no is not coming clear. Okay, sorry. so I, what I was checking is, is would this uh, structure is already in place, of course it is in place, but does this require too much of a change in the incentive structure or the, you know, a branch PRA or this should be steady state and a template has already been set up. Thank you. So the templates have been set up. Uh, we've been live now for, we started on 1st of January. We So we've completed one quarter. We are using this as a mechanism of incentivizing branch behavior. So the first time we have a branch incentive structure. Um, we hope to use this as a method of measuring branches as we go forward. But right now we have two other, we have another HR-related measure of measuring branches, but the two are getting closer and closer together. So, because this whole thing about trying to figure out what the value addition is, is also a little complicated and it is uh, driven by behavior of our branch folks. And uh, as we get more and more data, we get better and better at it. So the idea is that we slowly over time uh, move to uh, a single method of measurement and uh, if this works, this will be the method of measurement going forward at the branch level. Understood. Thank you very much. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The next question is from the line of Kunal from DSP Asset Managers. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, this is Vivek. Uh, my question was on uh, co-lending, uh, since you are focusing on picking up uh, your retail part of the advances, would co-lending be a good way so that you can, you know, grow the retail part as well as, uh, uh, as well as get, you know, data, which is a very useful thing for you to uh, embark on the next stage of growth? Yes, it would be a very good thing. So we are... Uh... We are in discussions with multiple uh, counterparties uh, as well as entities that can enable us to connect with multiple uh, participants. So this is something that we are actively exploring. It's taking a little longer than we thought, but, uh, but it is something that we are working on. Excellent, sir. So this one last question, is the growth in car book anyway linked to the fact that the corporate, uh, big corporate book is also growing because uh, they tend to be very transaction banking heavy. And that's my last question. Thank you. There was some amount of, uh, you know, out of the 2,000 odd crores that we did grow, uh, we, uh, a small portion, about 30 or 40% came from, uh, from the corporate. 
but a 60% of the growth, we grew at more than 20% uh, on an end of period balance basis. So about 60% of that growth is uh, retail, non-corporate type of growth, which is another thing that we are uh, uh, quite happy about actually. Excellent, sir. Thank you and wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from the line of Teja Shah from Unique Stock Broking Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, I have a few questions. Uh, if you can throw some light on the latest CV tap that you've done with Ashok Leland, I think for vehicle finances for leaders, that is one. Secondly, if you can throw some light on the right issue versus the QIP selection. And again, we are, let us say the bank is receiving around some 500 crore on, on rights, but again, we are paying dividend and we are again forgoing some 84 to 100 crores. And plus, if you can throw some light on the provision coverage ratio, when are we planning to hike it up to 87 to 90 percent? Okay. Uh, the rights issue versus QIP, the decision was on the basis of the fact that uh, at the point in time we made this decision, we were trading significantly below books and we thought that if we did a QIP, we will dilute uh, holders who are currently holding our stock and consequently we went in for a right. Anyway, that decision is uh, has been made, the rights issue uh, has happened, uh, our stock count has gone up. Uh, on account of the, you know, one is to four rights that we've done. Um, we last year we paid the dividends of 30 percent. Uh, this year we are just we continued with it. Every five percent uh, dividend uh, increase or uh, decrease impacts the total dividend payout by roughly 13 crores of rupees. So we have paid approximately 78 crores in total cumulative dividends uh, during the year. Last year, we paid roughly about 62 crores or thereabouts. There's an 18 crore increase and in which uh, the board felt was appropriate given the support that we have uh, got from, uh, from our shareholders in the past. Uh, and it is not too large a number for us to quibble about. Uh, with respect to the um, tie-up that we have with uh, um, Ashok Leyland, we uh, we have multiple relationships with Ashok Leyland, so we do we we do um, substantial quantum of business with Ashok Leyland. Uh, an area that we are looking uh, with uh, at is the financing of the dealers. So dealer floor finance is an area that we've been working on, and uh, we've had uh, you know the appropriate. Uh, um, sign-ups done with uh, Ashok Leland on that front. Let me just ask uh, Sentil, my colleague who manages this, to pipe in if I am uh, inadvertently saying something which is inappropriate. Sentil, over to you. You want to add uh, more context to this? Yes, boss. Uh, I hope I'm audible and clear. Yes, yeah. you are. It started uh, this CBC business uh, about a year back or maybe four or five months back where we come with a product line and a suit for and we're delivering to retail commercial vehicle and construction equipment customers. So in that context, you know, as a backward or a forward integration, we thought that we will try and engage with uh, big manufacturers and have a tie up with them and use the dealer route to try and, you know, fund the dealer and then do the retail finance to take out uh, so that is a larger thought process and philosophy behind engaging with manufacturers. So Leyland happens to be one of them. There are also leading construction equipment manufacturers like GACB who we are signed off with. Hence the retail business through the dealer financing route. I think if that gives clarity, then I think that's the strategy part. Uh, yeah. Uh, what are we looking at in terms of the top line and bottom line? If you can throw some light things. What are the expectations of the business coming out from this in terms of the growth? On the CBC side, I think the, the thought process is that if you're able to get to about 1,000 know, to 1,100 crores of uh, business by the end of this year, then I think we would be happy. I think we'll just start it. The thought process is to build it to about 1,000 crores and then a period of time, build the book. Uh, okay, fine. Thank you. 
Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the land of Ravindra, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are now. Uh, thank you, sir. Congrats for the good quarter. So, my first question is uh, the growth rate, right? Uh, so, given the balance sheet size, like uh, loan book of some 80,000 crores, so big banks, right, like the ICDFC bank, even though the balance sheet size is 20 black crores or something more like that. So, they are going at 20% and we are going at sub 12%. So why is it difficult? With quality, why can't we grow at 20% or so? Yes, sir. That is my first question. <laughs> now, historically, this bank has grown at uh, rates lower than this. So, we've taken it up to 12. You're right. I mean, our ambition is to go at the market because otherwise we become relative to the market. We, can, we become sl smaller and smaller over time. Uh, but, you know, we need to grow with quality. And that implies that our systems, processes, technologies have to be appropriate for the products that we are offering. And that is a journey that we have engaged in. So we launched our first fully automated lending solution for MSME this quarter, which enables our branches to actually um, say yes or no to a customer in the span of approximately an hour. Uh, and uh, like that, we need to now create multiple swim lanes through which different products can be put through. And once those product sets are in place is when we will be able to grow much faster than we are currently doing. So our ambition is to fix our systems, processes, and then grow, as opposed to trying to grow without fixing it, which means that we will make mistakes in the process. So right now, our, we think that we'll continue to grow at this 12, 13% range that we have demonstrated last year. And once the, over the next 12 months or so, our systems and processes will be fixed, new systems will come into place, hope that we should be able to step up our growth and come closer to the market now. I trust that answers your question. Yes, sir. So the next question is on the cost to income ratio. It is, looks like it's trending up uh, maybe some 64% or something. And uh, what is your aspirational range for that? And uh, another thing is, uh, given that we are going into the higher yielding assets, so how can we control the? Uh, I mean, what I mean, uh, are we going to control the NPA or we? Don't? So given the new book, right, the NPA is very negligible. Is it going to look like the same, or is it going to increase the NPA numbers if we go to the higher yielding assets? Uh, so thank you very much for that uh, question. Uh, we are acutely aware of the fact that the cost-income uh, ratio for us uh, is higher than our peers. It's an area that we are fully seized off, and we are wanting to correct that over a period of time. There are no immediate fixes for this. Uh, we've looked at our expenses very clearly and very closely. We find that roughly two-thirds of our expenses are not controllable, i.e. They, they belong to areas where changes are difficult. Approximately a third of it is controllable, where we have some, some element of uh, leeway uh, uh, to, to actually impact those expenses. Under the circumstances, what we are doing is we are, we are looking at our expenses very closely. We are, we are monitoring every expense that we make uh, uh, very, very tightly. At the same time, we are hoping to grow our revenues quite considerably because we do believe that we have uh, excess capacity in our organization which needs to be uh, leveraged. And as revenues grow, automatically revenue expense ratios will rise if the expenses do not grow at the same uh, time. Um, our ambition we had actually disclosed in the last quarter, we said that we want to take off about 1,000 basis points from our revenue expense ratio. I do believe that uh, that is going to be a difficult uh, task and it will take multiple years. It's not going to happen overnight um, because of the nature of the expense that we have. Uh, but uh, you, you make a very, very good point with respect to uh, revenue expense ratios. And if you were to ask me what is the biggest challenge I face as an individual in this company, I would say that that is the biggest challenge that we are facing at this point in time because it does reduce uh, strategic choices that are available uh, from a management perspective as to what we can do with our business. 
With respect to your second second question, which is basically you're saying you're going to hire these business, with your portfolio. So sorry to interrupt you. Uh, we are losing your audio. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay connected while we rejoin the management back to the call. Participants, please stay connected while we rejoin the management back to the call. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. We have the line for the management reconnected. So please go ahead and continue. Okay. I don't know where uh, you lost me, but uh, I thought I'd answered the first part of the question. Yes, sir. Second part of the question. Uh, yeah. yeah. Second part of the question with respect to uh, credit costs. We no, sir. Higher yielding assets. Right. Higher yielding assets, NPA. Yeah, we are moving into higher yielding assets. And these are relative, uh, when I say higher yielding assets, this is relative to the current asset book that we have. So as you know, we have 40% I'm sorry, corporate. And within that corporate, we have a large chunk of AAA corporate. So therefore, our assets that, uh, on the corporate side, our yields are quite low. So relative to that, we want higher yield, which does not mean that we are taking higher risk uh, necessarily. So we don't uh, expect a very material change in the portfolio performance. It has performed quite well. Uh, in our deck, we now have given you uh, ever 30 plus at 6 MOB, uh, one graph which you can look at. We expect that trend lines to stay where they are as we go forward. Thank you, sir. All the best for the future purpose. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next follow-up question is from the line of Tejasha from Unique Stock Broking Limited. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, we missed the provision coverage with CP. Means what is the roadmap going ahead? So we are currently at about 79.1% the way RBI measures it. And we are at about 69% and change the way uh, you would measure it uh, without the technical write-off. Uh, we, uh, so far, the provision coverage ratio has been built up by excess of recoveries over uh, slippages, uh, and uh, we believe that that trend line will continue. So over the next year or so, we expect another 300 basis point improvement uh, on this number. Uh, at some point in time, we will need to take a management call on whether we need to aggressively do technical write-offs uh, which can materially alter uh, both the gross NPA as well as the net NPA and the uh, provision coverage ratio. But given the fact that the uh, majority of our assets are secured, and given the fact that uh, we have now reached uh, uh, approximately 70% PCR, we are not looking at very aggressive uh, write-offs and provisioning at this juncture. Uh, if you can also throw some light on the retail uh, segment revenue and uh, retail banking, basically, because uh, the revenue and the incomes are, I think, uh, there is a big growth in that in terms of the income. Basically, when I say your other retail banking, there I think there is some drop in the income. So if you can throw some light, means where are we losing money over there? I, uh, I'll turn this question over to Vinod, who is our CFO, to provide color on this question. Yes. This is basically with regard to the segment reporting you are referring to. Correct. Yes. So in the segment reporting, if you see that the allocation, what we do is based on the asset size. So whenever the asset, there is a change in the different segment, the expense getting allocated to this segment also getting altered. So we cannot uh, readily map the income what we earn from that particular asset, particular segment to the uh, real income what goes into the profit loss account. This for the segment reporting, the allocation is based on the asset side. Okay. Um, so that clarifies you. 
but then uh, again uh, year on year if we are seeing we are seeing 100 means 50 percent of uh, 441 crores is gone down to 212 so what um, there is a massive work right so means not we plan us you know making money over there or what exactly right. or is shifted to some other area of the banking which is getting recognized Sir, it's not that we are ma- not making money over there. We are making money over there. It, that is, uh, as I told, the allocation that comes to the segment that shows the transaction is made based on the asset size. For example, if the treasury the asset size is reducing, it will get the expense that is getting allocated to there get reduced, and proportionately the uh, segment where the higher asset will have higher allocation of expenses. So that's why a particular segment may have a lower revenue, showing a lower revenue. It's not that actual revenue from that segment is lower. That is totally different from the revenue that flows into the P&L. That's my point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Milan Shah, individual NRI investor. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for this opportunity. So it was the, my question is a follow-up on the earlier question on the segment results. so you know this is something that is not clear to us so while everybody is congratulating on a good quarter if you look at the segment information the profit during this quarter is 392 crores versus 522 crores last time so leaving aside the issue about allocation we there's a drop of almost 120 crores in the profit and this is in spite of a 100 crore treasury income which we know is not uh, generally repeatable so i am struggling to understand how this is a good quarter we are showing a loss on the corporate side of 44 crores it seems sir uh, mainly when we see the corporate we have main growth comes from the corporate segment and here the corporate means the segment is above 7 crores what we classify as segment for the corporate sector so the growth majority of the growth happens in corporate sector the higher allocation will never uh, probably goes to the corporate sector so the where the asset size of the other segment for example the treasury has likely degrown their asset size and also with the other segments coming down and the corporate segment going up the asset base definitely the allocation of expense and other interest expense will go higher to the wholesale banking and corporate sector so that's the reason uh, the even though the revenue has increased the loss has almost on the same line because the expense allocation has increased in the corporate sector No, I think see that uh, it's, it's not making much sense to be honest because see we are lo- you know let's leave aside the segment. How do you at the overall level at the quarter level? See your total expenses are what they are. You know let's forget the inter segment allocation, but your profit overall for the quarter is three ninety two crores versus five twenty two of last time. So how does the allocation impact that? There uh, maybe we have the detail reply. Maybe we can connect to them. Uh, after this call, sir, we will give a detailed reply based on the details. Yes, I think so. Yeah, because it has nothing to do with the allocation. You know, how do we explain a drop in absolute terms of almost 20% in the quarter versus last quarter? That's what we need to understand. It is not the revenue base the drop has happened; it is on the profit. So uh, definitely, we will have a connect to there after this uh, call, and we will give the details. Yes, please, please do that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from Lanu Shintan Shah. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, hi. Ah, uh, so sir, ah, uh, two three questions from my end. Ah, uh, firstly, sir, if you could help us with the breakup of other income. Sir, do you want to take that? Yes. Other income breakup. Sir, uh, you want the uh, item wise breakup or the broad uh, breakup? Yeah, uh, no, sir. Actually, sir, uh, if I you give the broad breakup, broad I think the uh, CPT apart from that, yeah, like a revaluation of investments, forex income, that way. Yeah, our core fee income is at one ninety one crores. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you compare with the Q4, compared to the Q3, it was 179 crores, and the Treasury and Forex in Q3 it was 
158 crores and in Q4 it is 80 crores. So the major dip we happened in the treasury is mainly because in Q3 we had the benefit of lot of IPOs and other market favorable conditions which helped to gain higher incomes in Q3. So in Q4 the income is slightly down on the treasury side and in others also we have slight dip from 115 to 75 crores from Q3 to Q4. That dip mainly happened mainly because of the lower recovery from the fully return off accounts which we had higher in the Q3 and also the FLDG also, that is income booking from FLDG, which we don't have in Q4, but we had in Q3. So these two factors, two, three factors have contributed for the dip in the other income compared to Q3. Uh, so, so if you could quantify that amount of uh, recovery from return off and uh, in Q3 versus Q4? One second. Sir, in Q3 it was 30 crores and in Q4 it is 7 crores. Okay, okay, sure. Uh, and sir, uh, if I may get the number of a write off, uh, write off for the quarter. Sir, write off we have not done, as such, potential write off we have not done. Only the write off that comes in the PNL is the settlement that happens a part of uh, recovery. And the yes, amount sir. is roughly 20 crores. Yeah, and the amount is roughly 20 crores. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so one thing on the margin, so if we look at the margins, uh, they were up by around 19 with QOQ. Uh, this is despite uh, the uh, yields being up only around 6 with QOQ. So the largely the margin seems to be driven by the uh, investment yield. So uh, basically uh, there is a kind of a divergence in the COF and COD in this quarter also. COF has gone up slower than the COD, so any specific reason for that? And similar on the yield side as well, the advanced yield is lower, exists, while the uh, yield on assets is much higher. So similar reason on that side as well. Yeah. So if you see the cost of deposit, that has slightly increased when compared with the QOQ basis, because we have a lot of repricing happened in Q3 and Q4. So the impact has come in Q4. So that has slightly squeezed on that margin side. But however, our yield on advance is on increasing trend, and that will continue, that we are expecting to continue. Basically, uh, our net interest income grew from 819 crores to 875 crores. The increase, about 10 crores increase comes from increased uh, income on the uh, on the treasury side. Uh, the treasury book shrank a little, approximately 2,000 crores uh, end of period. So the average numbers I don't have with me, but uh, it shrank but gave us a little bit higher uh, income. Uh, the rest of the growth came because we had uh, substantially higher average assets for the quarter than we did in the prior quarter. So our average assets had grown 5%, and as a consequence, the total net interest income that is flowing through had increased quite considerably. So if there are other uh, technical details about the movement of these rates, etc., then I will request uh, you know to touch base with you separately and walk you through the numbers. Okay, so awesome. And uh, one more thing also on the, uh, so the recently newly launched products, uh, namely affordable housing, uh, CV or C, and the uh, revamped uh, lap which we have uh, done in this quarter. Uh, so some more nuances on the business in terms of yields, ticket size, and sourcing, whether we are doing it uh, internally or via a DSA model, and uh, secondly, would these be uh, higher yielding products, uh, but adjusted for the initial OPEX cost, which will be, be which will be front ending? Uh, would they be ROA accretive over a period? Means uh, how would uh, it be? Uh, when will it show up in the ROA? And what could be the size of this book after two years? Uh, you say two years from now on? Yeah. So all of these products, uh, I mean, for it to be material to us, have to be at least four four figure crores. So affordable housing used to be a core product for the bank once upon a time. Uh, we moved into uh, prime housing three or four years ago and vacated that niche. So we are going back to an area that we have done business with in the past. Uh, too early for us to tell you what the yields are, etc. But our aim, ambition is to get at least a thousand crores in each one of these product categories if not more. So mortgage lap, for instance, we want to do a couple of thousand crores during the year. Uh, so 
we can uh, we've not uh, specified goals for ourselves but that is uh, what we would intend to do and what what we have sort of cemented in our mind as to what we want to do uh okay sir so so probably but uh, at least so in a year only by the end of this year or probably by next year first half we could see some uh, impact when it's positive impact on the roa uh, would that be a fair assessment or it will take some more time yeah it will only when it becomes material will it start showing yeah that's a fair assessment so let us say affordable housing we want to do 2000 crores during the year by the time we get since the balance sheet size is already 80000 crores for it to materially impact our uh, 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 you know nim etc you need to have a certain critical mass so that is going to take um, if not 9 months a year uh so sure, so sure, sure. uh, that's it from my side yeah. thank you the next question is from the man of palaksha from milara capital plc please go ahead Yeah, I just had a few questions on the guidance front. If you could guide about the uh, what kind of growth uh, margins and ROI you are looking from the next year perspective from SRI side. Well, we would um, we want to grow at the rate at which we grew this year, which is about twelve percent on assets, twelve thirteen percent, so either twelve or early teens on the asset side and deposit side of a similar number. Uh, because this is the time when we are transitioning from our older models of business to a new model of business which uh, requires a great deal of investment in time and energy on our part to change our processes etc uh, we we've hit about 3.38% uh, nim this quarter in the medium term we want to get to about 3 and a half uh, so we are doing everything in our power to increase uh, nim uh and majority of this is going to happen by restructuring the balance sheet by getting higher yield books to grow whereas the low constraining the lower yield books uh and the constraints on the lower yield book will start once our higher yield uh, engine start operating so as of this moment uh our higher yield businesses are not kicking in volumes at the level we want therefore we are not constraining the lower yield business which is basically corporate but 18 months out we would like to see approximately 350 basis points in uh, and increase that thereafter yeah. okay and roa roa will stay where it is ma'am as you can see it uh, we are at roughly about 100 basis points now we don't see any immediate trigger for it to increase roa increase will come once uh, some of our expense related challenges are met through by increase in uh, uh, in revenues so so currently the driver is such that we will stay at about one uh, in the near future and once our revenues start growing quite considerably that's when our roa uh, numbers will start increasing but in the near term it will remain where it is okay that's it from my side thank you thank you very much Next question is from Man of Chennai from Person Capital. Please go ahead. Hi sir, um, just a bookkeeping question from my side. Uh, could you share the average LTV on the gold loan uh, portfolio for the for the entire year? That's like only four. It's seventy-two. It's seventy-four and touch. Uh, uh, got it, sir. And uh, what would you say would be the uh, steady state number that? We'd be looking at because I think a couple of quarters back it was somewhere around 83 percent if I remember correctly. So, including buyout, it's at 74.92 percent, so about 75 percent. Um, okay. And excluding buyout, which is basically our own portfolio, is at 70.73 percent. Uh, so, so the long term trends are that uh, it will continue to drop is my view because majority of our growth is coming from our own sources yeah. understood sir and uh, and what is the average yield on this uh, portfolio for the year uh, can i get uh, uh, you know to answer that separately to you i mean i don't have the data with me at this juncture sure sir sure. thank you sir
Thank you. Next question is down the line of Prabal from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, can Capital, I first question? Uh, so my first question is on the yield. Uh, we Prabal, sorry three... to interrupt you. Uh, we are actually losing your audio. Can you speak to the handset, please? Is this better now? Slightly. Much better. Okay. Uh, so my question was on yield. Uh, uh, we have seen sequential increase in the loan yields, while we are also uh, simultaneously increasing our share of corporate book. Uh, so what explains this uh, decortment? <laughs> very, very, very good uh, question. It is, uh, you know, reasonably uh, aggressive. Uh, pricing action in the sense that uh, demanding and getting a reasonable price uh, with the corporates. Uh, we had some leeway with on our uh, uh, the the, um, the finance company books, uh, the NBFC exposures that we had uh, post the change in uh, in risk weight. Uh, we we did go back and try and renegotiate wherever it was possible, so that we got a um, incremental yield to cover for the incremental risk weight uh, that RBI had uh, prescribed for us. Uh, so that enabled us to take our corporate uh, yield a little bit uh, higher than where it was in the past, and plus, uh, you know, just overall trying to be a little bit more uh, careful with respect to um, how we price ourselves on the corporate side uh, enabled us to take uh, total corporate uh, yields up. Um, I have with me my colleague, Biji, who is our corporate bank head. So maybe she can throw a little bit more light on this, uh, and then we can come back to me. Uh, good evening, sir. Thanks for the question. So basically what we have done is that, of course, in terms of the large corporate AAA ones and all, the pricing is a bit finer. But we try to balance it through the converting wherever possible to the, to the FCBL where the incomes are on, FCBL means the forex zones where the uh, yield is on a higher side. Then making a mix of the sufficient finance. Earlier, one gentleman was asking about the uh, tie-up with ALN. So similar tie-ups with many OEMs we have done. So those dealer finance cases which are coming in, then a mix of other vendor finance cases which are coming in. So through all these activities, we try to balance the whole portfolio. In certain cases, it will be finer price whether the corporate is a higher rated one. But in the other cases, it is able to manage the whole portfolio in a manner that the whole yield is improving. Hope I have answered the question. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, Some of the second question again on the corporate side. So uh, we are seeing also uh, the share of the rest of India uh, increasing in the in the corporate side. So I understand that uh, you have a, a reasonably better brand in the southern and the Kerala markets. Uh, but what is our right to win in the in the rest of the India in the corporate side? And how are you you negotiating or pricing with the customers outside of these regions? See, uh, in uh, what I understand is whether the percentage of Kerala is uh, lower. Can you please come again on that area? So basically, he's asking why should people bank with us and why should we win in this? <laughs> yes. uh, I think the answer is uh, very clear. <laughs> okay. We have high quality, high quality RMs, and we are very tenacious and dogged, and we've been chasing this business for a long time. So we have a large book in uh, Bombay, and we have a large book in Delhi, which is what Delhi, is not rest of, yeah, yeah, rest of India business. Um, so we offer every product that other people do. Uh, only thing we do is we offer it uh, with perhaps a little bit more personalized care than many other banks can can manage, and consequently, uh, you know, our uh, corporate customers think that it is appropriate for them to deal with us. Add uh, anything you may wish, um, uh, Easy. 
Yes. So basically, we work with sixty around sixty-eight RMs, and there are certain regional heads as well. So from the central uh, level, we take a pre-watch data of all the major corporates whom we want to approach. It's a kind of a wish list where we will check the basic data, and then we will approach them with a tailored product wherever we can uh, support them in terms of the term loans or in terms of the supply chain part, which I was explaining earlier, or in terms of short term as well, because wherever there is any opportunity through the short term, we enter through that, and then we move into the normal working capital level. So this uh, people will be approaching the corporate with a curated product, which will be somewhat matching their requirements in that present level. So the homework which is being done in that area actually is helping us to uh, crack the deal. Right. And this is entirely sold, or there is some element of uh, uh, multiple banks in arrangements as well? Uh, there are both. So even if it is sole banking or kind of multiple banking or consortium, wherever it is, we keep on uh, going ahead with our own analysis, our own risk capital and everything. We don't depend upon the analysis done by some other bank. It's based on our risk capital and our risk capabilities alone. Got it. Great. Uh, and for my last question is on the retail side. Uh, so uh, currently the book is not going, but as we plan to scale this book, uh, the focus geographies will be Will be our southern Kerala geographies, or we also intend to uh, push into the other markets. So, should I take it? To other, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, so uh, we were, we are strong in the certain areas and Kerala as well. But the major cities and the major uh, metros and all actually our base is low where we have a lot of opportunities to grow. So in terms of the secured retail, if you consider the housing loans and the vehicle loans, with the tie-up that is happening with the OEMs and the dealer side actually is helping us to scale up in terms of the auto part. And coming to the housing segment with all the tie-up with our PR, which we are doing with the builders, wherever we have uh, corporate relationships already in, uh, tied up and everything, that is also helping us, us to penetrate to the builders. So these areas is helping us to um, keep us uh, moving in all the major metros and the cities. And at the same time, the branches in the southern area is also focusing on. So it's a two-channel, you can say. Uh, through the DSA, DSG builders and dealers and everything, the whole uh, growth is happening. At the same time, the branches are also working with their own clients and all the new additions that is happening. Got it. And when should we expect the retail, the retail book to start picking up? Of course, it's, it has already started uh, growing, and uh, auto has uh, grown with more than 30% in last year, and housing is also moving up, and we have, as Shashad Risa was explaining, the growth has started happening in that area. The logins are improving, and our presence is also improving in all the major cities. Correct, and the entire process of turnaround time and everything, that is in place, so the only push is required now. Ah, yes, and in, uh, slightly change, slight changes are required in the process part as well, which we are working upon, straight through processes wherever possible, we are trying to make it also happen. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Jay Mundra. Please go ahead. Two questions. One is, you know, we had... In the last month, last last month, we had said that uh, we have to uh, sort of a stop uh, credit card because of you know observation on uh, co brand uh, yeah, Sorry, we are losing your audio. Can you speak to the handset, please? Yeah, hi sir. Uh, I wanted to check an update on you know credit card uh, tie-up that we had because after RBI observation for whatever reasons, uh, we had to discontinue that. So A, if you could highlight, you know, uh, uh, what was the issue and how far are we uh, in the current setup to, uh, to, to uh, I mean, how far, uh, how, what is the progress on that front? Thank you, and I'll ask the second question later. So Jay, with respect to the uh, credit card, um, as of this moment, we are not issuing any incremental cards. We are continuing to manage the cards that we had uh, at the time in, uh, when the uh, RBI request for us to stop issuing new cards came into force. The balance sheet uh, continues to be buoyant, and therefore, from a revenue perspective, we don't see any immediate risk. With respect to the points that RBI wanted addressed, 
uh, given that you know RBI's letter is not in the public domain, I am constrained to not you know give you all the details. Safe to say that RBI wanted us to make a few changes, which we are working on currently. It is work in progress. We think that we know what needs to be done. Um, once we um, we are also in uh, dialogue with uh, the Reserve Bank of India to understand whether our uh, interpretation of their requirements is appropriate or not. And once um, uh, you know we we get a concurrence from them that this is what they intend for us to do, we will ensure the implementation happens uh, in quick order. And uh, our current wish list. And I'm not saying that it will happen in that form, but our current wish list is that we should be in a position to have, uh, you know, crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's, and restart next quarter, subject to RBI approval. So that is the the timeline that we're working on. Right. Obviously, and, this is subject to RBI approval. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So is it safe to say that I mean, uh, I mean, all our credit card issuance are with with the with the partner, right? We don't originate too much on our own. No, we have zero card issuances on our own. It's all done through this single co-brand partner. So as of this moment, there are no incremental credit cards being originated. Sure. So this my question is a bit of a follow-up on the someone had earlier asked on the ROA tree, right? So this quarter, this year as a whole, this was a good year in the sense that you know, there was a good treasury income which may or may not sustain. Uh, <clears throat> asset quality has been good, probably it will sustain. Um, but if from here, uh, uh, I mean, you said that there were only to increase margins by few basis point. Um, but uh, I mean, what could be the other lever because it looks like treasury, uh, you know, may not see a similar gain. And OPEX um, has that OPEX because of wage pipe, wage bipartite, etc., etc. Has that been? Um, uh, 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 is that already over? As a OPEX as a percentage of assets, should that uh, decline or should that improve? And uh, or how should one look at the ROT? So margins are more or less stable to rising, but because there is a treasury drag. Uh, how should one look at, uh, let's say, fee income and OPEX uh, line item? Thank you. Good question, Jay. I wish I could answer that. I would need a crystal ball, which I don't have. Uh, but let us assume, let us start with the basics. I, our biggest challenge is, um, as you rightly uh, mentioned, is on the expense side. So our, uh, uh, we we will do our utmost to ensure that the expense numbers remain where they are and not deteriorate any further. Uh, and uh, we will eke out uh, a few extra, uh, uh, you know, uh, basis points on the spread side so that our revenues uh, increase. Uh, so from the expense side, we're going to manage it very tightly. We don't think that. Uh, we should have a very substantial increase. There will be some uh, ongoing increase on account of inflation-related adjustments, but not of the same order of magnitude that we have seen in the past. Uh, we will get, we will do our damnedest to change our product mix in such a fashion that we, we get uh, some uptick on the spread side. And then finally, the wild card is going to be what happens. Actually, there are two wild cards: what happens on our recovery side and what happens on the on the treasury side. Treasury side, for the near term, we don't see much uh, visibility of uh, profit potential uh, because the fixed income side, given that uh, rates are back up to 720 and thereabouts, there is limited uh, PNL that can come on the fixed income side. There is still some money to be made on the FX and equity side, which we are continuing to make, but not of the same order of magnitude that we saw in Q3 of 24. Um, so given all of this, uh, finally on the recovery side, which has been uh, helping us uh, from a PNL standpoint very dramatically over the last few years, we think that we still have another six to nine months of runway where recoveries will remain reasonably buoyant. And consequently, uh, we have that time horizon to actually change the asset mix. 
So in the near term, as I had mentioned earlier, our ROAs will, will not rise from where they are at this point, but we have levers in our hands that will, that will help us not, uh, you know, to keep it where it is and give us time to build this alternate revenue streams and increase our NIMS in such a fashion that ROA growth is possible in the, in the long run. I don't know if I've answered your question or not. No, no, that answer. Thank you for the answers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Nanav Pallavi Deshpande from Samisha Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, I just wanted to understand on the current account, you've mentioned a threefold rise in the balances for the new customers. I just wanted to understand what's driving that. Uh, partly driven by the new sales value added uh, tool that we created, uh, which made it possible for us to measure one branch against another. So in the past, you know, when you were looking at branch measurements, you had a branch profitability report and you had a branch sales report. And the branch sales report used to have multiple things in it, you know, current account, different types of current account, MR account, uh, savings account, different types of savings account, uh, some asset products, uh, vault products, uh, wealth management products, everything. And it becomes very difficult to compare one branch with another. The sales value added metric enables us to compare one, one product with another. So last quarter, we sensed an opportunity in the market uh, on the current account side, and we, uh, we incented our people uh, from, uh, to, to, to go after current accounts. And as a consequence, we did over 20,000 current accounts uh, last quarter, which is significantly more. Normally, in a month, we do roughly, uh, in a quarter, we, we do significantly less. So, it was a huge increase for us, and it also increased the total amount of uh, peers machines that we had in force. So all of that put together in, impacted uh, the the growth in CASA balances positively. Right. That's a great performance there on that side. Uh, second, my second question was on the uh, NBFC. So what would be the share of lending to NBFCs right now of the total book? No, no, the, our total NBFC exposure, ma'am, can we tell you offline? I mean, we'll just, we will we'll yeah. come back to you uh, offline, ma'am. Yeah? Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take that as the last question. I'll hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So I wanted to uh, thank all of you for being here. I think we've had uh, uh, a decent uh, quarter. I mean, we've started making progress on growing our net interest margin. Uh, we've started, uh, you know, the process of transitioning from uh, from an institution that was dependent largely on one line of business to having multiple lines of business that contribute to it. Um, our journey of uh, simplifying our processes and our journey of building world-class technology that supports our sales engine has, has begun. Our first fully automated product has gone live, and we are hoping that it will perform well. Uh, we have uh, uh, an agenda of uh, installing six or seven similar products before the year is out, which in turn will change the way we do business and the, change and the, the way we inter interact with our customers. So I think we are feeling reasonably good about the quarter that has just ended. Uh, we understand that the top line numbers do not uh, show our achievements very favorably, but I think the underlying trends are reasonably good. And we are looking forward, uh, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, we are looking forward to improving our performance as we go forward. So thank you very much, everybody, for being on this call. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. On behalf of ICICI Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.